Malaria continues to be one of the most important infectious diseases worldwide. And while it is showing signs of resistance to some of the current treatments, and there is urgent need for scientists to come up with some new treatment methodologies, we're gonna look at the medications that we currently have to treat them and where they work in the life cycles today. My name is Tammy Dennett, this is Nurse Minder, and we're looking at the medications, the pharmacology behind treating malaria. So let's go to the board. So we're gonna look at these medications in two stages. First, I'm gonna give you the overarching function of them, the, the type of anti-malarial that they are, and then we'll look at the actual names of them. So as we first, the very beginning of this life cycle, the mosquito is taking a blood meal from an infected person. Now, is there a way we can prevent that mosquito from becoming infected and starting off this entire life cycle within the mosquito? Yes. This is exactly why they recommend that when you travel, you use a high percentage DEET mosquito repellent, use netting at night, and if you're out walking around in the rural areas, but also to avoid those rural areas and to stay in the more touristy sites. So if we can prevent this life cycle from happening, we could end malaria. But as we know, this is a worldwide infectious disease. So let's look at the next level. Once this mosquito has taken the blood meal, we said that the next thing that happens is it has ingested gametocytes, that male and female plasmodium. So we can actually sterilize those gametocytes so that they can't reproduce and we can cause them to self self-select to, to um, burst and kill themselves. We call that gametocyte sterilizing agents or gametocytocidal. And these are medications that we would take such that when the mosquito took the blood meal, that's the function it would have inside the mosquito. Well, let's say we get past the gametocyte stage and we've got these now mating, creating zygotes and spore animals. Remember sporozoites, the spore animals? And if you haven't watched this whole cycle, go back and watch the malarial video. I'll put a, a link up here for you. There are also medications that we can take that when the mosquito takes that blood meal, that will actually prevent them from mating in the stomach and creating spore animals. They are called sporontocidal. Now, sidal is really suicide. They are killing themselves as a result of taking in this medication because they can't reproduce. So this is the animal side of it, and we can actually impact what's happening in the mosquito when we take our prophylactic anti-malarials. If you've ever traveled, you've likely been offered a prescription for prophylactic anti-malarials. Now let's come to the human side of this. The mosquito has infected you with all of those, those thousands of sporozoites, and those now go to the liver and invade your liver cells. Currently, there is no known drug that will prevent that process. Once inside the cell, they create schizonts, remember, still children at heart, and they continue like a little sac inside of that liver cell, and inside of that, we can use anti-relapsing drugs to prevent the cycle of, mm, they can lay dormant and then they can regenerate anti-relapse drugs here. Once they burst, we have merozoids floating through the bloodstream, which are now entering into your red blood cells, causing the red blood cells to burst. Can we stop that? Yes, we have schizontocidal, so where they've now been released, that they will self-select to kill themselves. Schizontocidal medication. So there are many life cycles, three of them, inside the mosquito, inside the human, inside the blood cells. And we have medications that will act at various different stages. And it's important for this because you don't know you're infected until we're in the blood stage. This is called the erythrocytic cycle. And this is when you start to show symptoms, which means you have already gone through the other phases and they can lay dormant and they can recycle, come, come back again. And so we need to be able to attack this drug, sorry, attack this parasite at different stages. So now let's look at the different drugs themselves. Now, before we get into the medications, I just thought I would come back and let you know that there's four different types of plasmodium um, that are named as causes of malaria. So plasmodium falciparum, this is the most deadly, hence why we've got the skull here. This is gonna be an acute illness 
bad, bad, bad signs and symptoms, hypotension, high fevers, it's not good. So this is the most critical one. Plasmodium vivax is milder. So I just think of Viva, life, live. You're, you're likely to live from this one. It's a milder form of malaria. Then we have Plasmodium malari, which is found in the tropical areas. Will still cause a mild infection in the local population. And in tourists, it'll cause more severe symptoms. And then O Valley, which is rarely seen anymore and they believe to be on its way to extinction. So just to kind of bring those in because you may hear those terms as well as you study your pharmacology. Now there is something that is critical to know before you are prescribed any of these medications and that is a blood test that you need to have to measure your G6PD. And what this stands for is glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency is what they're looking for because if you have this deficiency, then you will not be prescribed primaquine or chloroquine because those actually can cause a hemolytic crisis. Now, when it comes to identifying drugs that are antimalarials, there is a clue. They all end in quin with a few exceptions. So pyrimethamine is one you're going to have to memorize as an antimalarial. And then we have a whole host that will help um, that are identified very quickly. So primaquine, chloroquine, mefloquine, hydrochloroquine, and quinine where it's in the front. So you see this Q-U-I-N-E is common to many of the antimalarial drugs. Now the second thing this board shows is where in the life cycle, whether it's in the mosquito or in the human, do these medications have an impact and an effect? You notice that pyrimethamine and primaquine are across the board in both the mosquito and in the human life cycle. One difference here is that Pyrimethamine is a gametosterilizing agent, whereas primaquine is a gametocidal agent. Both of them are spirontocidal. So as you are prescribed these medications, know that one of the reasons you take them is so when the mosquito takes the blood meal, it also takes some of that medication and it is actively working inside the mosquito to halt the cycle of malaria. Now, once that mosquito inje injects, sorry, the sporozoites into a human, there are more options in terms of how to interrupt and stop and halt the life cycle of malaria. Primaquine, sorry, primaquine here is the second one. Pyrimethamine and primaquine are both prophylactic in those liver cells, anti-relapse, preventing those sh shizants from um, laying dormant and coming active and laying dormant and coming active, and shizontocidal. Here's where we see a massive difference. Chloroquine, methylquine, hydrochloroquine, and quinine are all schizontocidal. So these four become prophylactic and treatment because they are working in that schizontocidal when those schizonts mature and get released into the bloodstream and start to um, invade the red blood cells. It's actually helping to halt that process. Thanks for watching. This has been a video around the drugs and where they fit into the life cycle of malaria, both in the mosquito and in the human, so you can get a better understanding as to where they're working and what they're doing. So be sure that you're having a great conversation with your doctor and your healthcare team when being prescribed these medications so that you know the side effects and we'll take care of that in another video. That's it for today. This is Tammy with NurseMinder. Go out there and make it a great day. Be sure to follow, subscribe, and share.